Am I mixing pop culture genres here? Hmm. Works for me. Worth Ruby and cool anyway, right? Grr. During spooky season, I am totally addicted to all those great Halloween videos out there of people showcasing their beautiful homes and their amazing talent for Halloween decor. I especially love watching spooky season vlogs of people sharing all the fun things they do throughout the whole season of Autumn and Halloween. Rabbit of Radis Radis is one of my favorites. I'll link them in the description. In this house, we actually have a lot of that going on. Surprise, surprise. So I thought it would be fun to share that with you. Or maybe it's mostly for myself to watch back on later and go, oh yeah, what did I do with that? <laughs> also, meow. Yeah, I think I'm really mixing pop culture references. That cool vintage Halloween style of the 1970s and earlier has had a huge resurgence over the past few years, and I love it. Ten plus years ago, I wanted one of those old black cat cardboard cutouts, and I had to buy an original Bastel one from the 60s on eBay, which wasn't in great condition and smelled like basement. So finding these four cool retro figurines at Marshall's Online last year, I think, made me very happy. The Cat and Pumpkin Buddies was a thrift store find. Husband thinks it's super creepy, but I love it and I'm glad I didn't get rid of it. This cute serving tray came from a Craigslist haul probably 15 years ago. I believe it's actual vintage Halloween cards decoupaged onto the tray. It's lasted all these years and it's adorable and useful. I think these Halloween blocks came from a Craigslist haul and I'm not sure, but they might actually be vintage as well. I don't know anything about them, but they are wonderful and I love them. These fantastic wooden ornaments are handmade by the artist Kaylee Radcliffe in the UK. Her art is so fun and playful, but with a hint of oddity. She does more than just Halloween art, and it's all super interesting and kind of weird, which totally speaks to me. I'll link her webpage in the description. These three pieces were painted by my late mother-in-law, S. Walden, who was an artist. I love their Dia de los Muertos vibe, but later my husband realized that they appear to represent him and his two siblings. These paintings are usually tucked away, but they are the main feature in our house every spooky season. And of course, this scary animated Medusa head. The skull sketch is also by S. Walden. I'll be honest, our taste in art leans towards the dark and eerie anyway, so a few of these pieces are up all year round, like this painting called Headache by the artist Lisa Waddle, and this painting called Hurts, also by Lisa Waddle. This wonderfully weird sculpture is a dilapidated old house with a fallen tree on it. I love how the house appears to have a face, and the tree has a name carved in it. Chill. The artist is the late Ed Tyler, and he called these hallucinated houses. This piece and the upcoming other pieces are by my husband, John So. He's great at creating art out of various types of canvases, and he uses dollar store decorations as stencils. They turn out really good. These two are fun, colorful little paintings given to us by friends. 
Okay, have you ever done Pino's palette where you follow along with an artist as they teach you how to paint a scene? A few years ago, I went with my sister and we painted a Van Gogh style starry pumpkins. Here's how it's supposed to look. Here's how mine ended up. Not sure why my pumpkins appear to be levitating or why the stars look like nipples, but it's a fun painting that brings a smile to my face whenever it comes out at Halloween. I love having fresh flowers in the house all year round. The autumn bouquets are especially fitting with a spooky season decor. If you have a Trader Joe's in your area, they make really good affordable bouquets of flowers with the best fall colors and plants. These colorful lily type flowers are Alstromerias and they last a good long while. Fake flowers are the best for Halloween because, ironically, they never die. Even when they have eyes and spiders in them. Fake spiders, of course, otherwise, no. These black, dusty roses look wonderful in a white milk glass vase. On the way to the next flowers, I had to show off this beautiful faux cast stone sculpture. I don't know where I got this, but every year I marvel at it. Okay, here are more fake black roses that look amazing in a big red vase. I found this vase at a thrift store, and I always keep my eye out for more red, red, red. My husband and I are always on the search for the perfect pumpkin candle. When we very first lived together, we bought some cheapy pumpkin one from Walgreens that, for some reason, lasted years. So that scent is very nostalgic to us, and we're always looking for its equal. This black one from Marshalls comes close. I found that candles at Marshalls are really affordable and their selection is excellent. This one is fun because it creates a luminary when the wax goes down. Hey, I'm curious, what do you do with your candle jars once they're done? I'm always looking for ideas. Let me know in the comments what you do with your old candle jars. This is so cool. I found it years ago from the Grandin Road catalog, then I found another one for cheaper at Spirit Halloween. I listen to it while I do dishes. And now for tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery. Make ready my grave. I just love ambient videos with gorgeous animated scenes and wonderful sound effects. I have them on while I work and sometimes at night to help me sleep. On my YouTube page, I made a bunch of various ambient playlists, three of which are spooky season themed, Halloween, Autumn, and general spooky slash eerie. Each of them have between 50 and 100 videos. I love this one of what we do in the shadows with Nandor lurking in the background. There are simply not enough hours in the day to listen to all the excellent music out there. Soma FM is a fantastic online radio station with 40 channels of various genres of music, all superb, all commercial free. Every Halloween, they reopened their Doomed channel, which is super dark industrial and eerie ambient music. Halloweenradio.net has been my go-to for over 15 years. 
Their main station plays an immense variety of music, greatly stretching the definition of what's considered Halloween music. If a song has a title that's even remotely strange, this station plays it. Like Missing Persons Destination Unknown and Radiohead Burn the Witch and Don Dixon Praying Mantis and Depeche Mode Black Celebration and The Hooters All You Zombies and Stevie Wonder Skeletons. And of course, in between, there's classic and also obscure, legit Halloween tunes. It's a really cool station. And the best part, it plays all year round. Obviously, they're a little late updating the text on their webpage. And then there's my Spotify playlist. Halloween Tweak is influenced by HalloweenRadio.net in that it has some classic Halloween songs, but also a variety of the edgier songs you hear at Halloween and some total randos that could be considered Halloween. Halloween Instrumentals is like scary movie music or spooky background music. I've been building Vampire Musica for over 11 years, so it has nearly 500 songs. It's more of a year-round playlist for me, but if you like gothy dark wave from all kinds of genres, this is for you. Tortured Souls is my version of Soma FM's Doomed for when Doom is off the air in the off season. Hey, sometimes I still need dark, deep, gloomy, creepy instrumental music in like June. These next two playlists, Spooky Season Decor and Spooky Reading, are pretty much shortened versions from Vampire Musica. Gothy and moody music for when I was decorating and reading. Misfits Wall Clock, because why not? The Grandin Road Annual Halloween Catalog is amazing. It's like a fashion magazine for Halloween. I love them mostly to get ideas for decorating because, oi, is this sh expensive! But the Halloween Haven issue is always one of the first things that arrives, signaling the start of the spooky season. All year long, pink flamingos live in our front yard. Then suddenly, when spooky season arrives, they turn into... Skelamingos! Ah! This was the first Halloween decoration we ever got as a couple. Did I catch you? Dare you to try it again? <laughs> Told you I'd catch you. Try knocking it safer. <laughs> Every year, a friend gives us the corn stalks from her country garden. I like to make my own scented hand lotion. Oops. Oops! I 
I'm taking a large bottle of my favorite unscented cream and adding it into a smaller tube with pumpkin fragrance. The lotion I love to use is the Elderflower Hydrating Lotion, which I buy from a shop called Sage and Cedar. I'll link them in the description. I am obsessed with hand lotion, but I'm super picky about it. This medium weight elderflower lotion is the only one I've found that's perfect for me, and Sage and Cedar was the only place I was able to find it. I imagine it's available in more places now, maybe? So I buy a big 32 ounce or 946 milliliter bottle of it from Sage and Cedar, unscented, and then I buy whatever fragrance oils I like, and I make my own little squeezy bottles of my favorite lotion with various scents. Now I'm looking through my 5 million Halloween stickers to find the perfect label for this bottle. By the way, this Mrs. Meyers multi-surface cleaner in apple cider scent is wonderful for autumn time. It's a limited edition only sold during fall though, so I've often had trouble finding it. Okay, making husband try it. He likes it? Uh, maybe not. Every year, I take part in a two-person horror movie challenge with one of my best friends who lives in another state. We use a list from the website Nightmare on Film Street. The cool thing about their lists is it doesn't list specific films. Rather, it lists topics or genres, and you determine which movie you'll watch within that genre. So it really personalizes the experience and allows for a great variety of movies that each of us see because even we watch separate movies. She and I start this challenge every year on August 1st, giving us three months to get through the list at a very easy pace. As we each watch a movie, we text each other a pick of the movie that we watched, the genre it fits, our star rating, and our thoughts on it. Sometimes it can get pretty funny. Delving into the horror genre can get pretty risky. There's all kinds of disturbing or triggering things that I don't want to see. For me, I do not want to see animals in peril. We discovered an incredible website that identifies the potential triggers of any kind in any movie. I check this site before every horror movie I watch. It's tradition in our house to get the silly jack-o'-lantern shaped pizza from Papa Murphy's every Halloween. I mean, it's actually just a small cheese pizza with a suggestion of pepperoni, but we are suckers for the gimmick. It is so dang cute and delicious. One of the best things about Autumn is the seasonal craft beers. I'm now a non-drinker, so I'm always on the hunt for a good non-alcoholic beer that tastes like good beer. Athletic Brewing Company excels in that area. This year, I was delighted to find their limited edition Oktoberfest brew. Let's try it out now. Pass. Meh, it's a bit bitter for my liking, unfortunately. I'll still drink it, though. But I do miss the annual pumpkiny ales and spicy brews that come out this time of year. The Elysian Pumpkin Pack is worth waiting all year for. The Night Owl beer especially was my favorite. Of course, the Barbies celebrate Halloween in their house. I 
love puzzles, and I love doing seasonal puzzles. My cat Walter is fascinated by the activity, but mostly it's just in the way of him getting to the cat scene in the wonderful, creepy movie Coraline. This spooky puzzle is super colorful, and there are also 20 hidden objects to find once it's completed. I'm really going to enjoy doing this. Sit back and enjoy it too if you like. Thank you. 